Hello and welcome to Long COVID Foundation podcast. My name is Dr. Valentina Veduta and I'm Long COVID Foundation trustee. This channel is for Long COVID sufferers, researchers, practitioners, and a whole host of other people who want to learn more on COVID. Please take the second, like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and stay up to date. The Long COVID Foundation aims to find the best rehabilitation solutions for Long COVID sufferers. We provide the knowledge that you can use to get necessary treatment from your general practitioners. So stay tuned, like our videos and subscribe. Could you give us an overview of vitamin D? and its relation to vitamin K2. So could you explain why vitamin D is important? Well, vitamin D, no question it's a vitamin because without it, you really, in your early age, cannot develop properly the skeletal system. So it's serving a role of the vitamin. But in the adult body, it is more than a vitamin, it's a hormone. And one of the things which this hormone is regulating is our immune system. Problem is that majority of us are deficient in vitamin D or becoming deficient with uh, our mature age. Uh, so the solution to this problem, which is actually is recommended solution, very commonly recommended, that you take supplementation of vitamin D, which is especially important if you live in some northern country or country when there is a lot of rain. In such case, you are not getting enough uh, solar uh, rays uh, in order to synthesize your own vitamin D, and you need to take external vitamin D support. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that whenever you take vitamin D, it comes as a bolus. So you cannot really make a little bit of it throughout the day, like you synthesize in your skin. You take a pill and you swallow it, and then because it's fat-soluble vitamin, it's uh, very quickly goes wherever it needs to go. And vitamin D is regulating calcium, and it helps to move calcium very quickly from one depot of calcium to another depot, and in transition, your calcium is going through your blood vessels. Mm -hmm. And blood vessels, especially if those blood vessels are a little bit damaged by one or another thing, including post-coronavirus antibodies, you might uh, actually have uh, problems uh, with calcium being uh, incorporated into the vessels, and you will have a plaque, which is like a calcium plug. It's a hardening of the blood vessels. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like incrustation with tiny crystals of calcium. Mm -hmm. And that decreases the flexibility of the blood vessels because of the uh, not great elasticity. Your blood vessels cannot really quickly react to the changes in the volume, and because of that, you might have high blood pressure. So it's not a good road to start upon. So how to make sure that vitamin D is not doing this, but only doing good things? The good idea here is to take vitamin D together with vitamin K2, which is present in its form MK7. MK7. Really, the form is not that important, but just MK7 is the form which is the longest living in the human body. Normally, vitamin K is very short living, It comes with leaves like spinach, uh, like cabbage, you know, dark uh, green leaves. Mm -hmm. But you cannot eat them throughout the day. If you would be like taking a leaf of spinach every five minutes, then you will have even concentration of vitamin K throughout your blood always. But you cannot do that. So MK7 is one of particular forms of vitamin K, which is made by certain bacteria. Mm -hmm. And those are absolutely very beneficial bacteria, which live in some kind of fermented foods, but you couldn't take those fermented foods all the time through as well, like tofu, for example. So you take this uh, vitamin MK7 as a supplement, and that's enough to have once a day together vitamin D and vitamin K, and all together they will make sure you will have all the hormonal functions of vitamin D without moving of too much calcium through your blood vessels. Also, if you don't need vitamin D, there are some very lucky people who don't need any vitamin D. Yeah, because they spend time outdoors, you know, everything pitching their body was good. There are people like this. It's still very beneficial to take vitamin K2 every day. 
The studies show that group of people who are taking vitamin K every day is living longer and having later onset of cardiovascular diseases than other groups of people. No, and this is, by the way, not a very common finding because a lot of studies of vitamins show that there is no benefit. So is it K or K2? K2, K2 specifically. Uh, it's actually long story short. There is only one vitamin called vitamin K. But it comes in different forms. K1 and K2. And K1 form is uh, made chemically. And you can actually buy it, but vitamin K in those shops, chemical form of it. Later, after it's already get all the fame and everything, was uh, proven to be not beneficial for human body. Because that's create uh, thrombs. Mm -hmm. It's actually having pro-thrombotic, very strong pro-thrombotic activity. Mm -hmm. This is one of the vitamins which is necessary to make thrombs. And yes, if you have bleeding problems, yeah. you need this. But on post-COVID, you have usually absolutely opposite problems. So K1 on post-COVID, absolutely not advisable. It's the last thing which you want to take. Because of that, you only should take vitamin K2, nothing else. And the best form of K2 is MK7. Uh, actually, those forms, they are called like MK3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yes, so there are a variety of them. And the di difference between them is how long is the tail. As longer the tail of the molecule, as more stable the molecule is. It was shown that vitamin MK4 you can take, but then when you do blood analysis for the metabolic profiling, you couldn't find it in the blood. It just get destroyed very quick. And vitamin K2 MK7 with longer tail, it can live in your blood for up to one day. And that's what you need from the pill to the pill. One day to another, and you have enough of this vitamin K2 to cover you up in case if a lot of vitamin D would be moving too much calcium around. So what would be the daily amount of vitamin D for post-COVID recovery? That's hard to say. There are recommendations, and those recommendations are based on your level of the vitamin D in your blood. So you need to do blood tests to find it out. But uh, unfortunately, those are not very popular blood tests. In America, you can have this test once a year. And if you come to physician and say, I want my vitamin D, he will give you this test. Mm -hmm. In UK, uh, for what I know, it's not necessarily the case, especially if you measure it already in this year. For example, you measure it in January, then you get COVID in March, and then you get post-COVID, and now you're dealing with it, uh, and it's August, yeah? And you want to measure your vitamin D again. You will not get this analysis because they say, okay, but we, we know it was good in January. Well, since January you got COVID, they still wouldn't do it. But it's very important that you self-pay for it or somehow you will get your level of vitamin D because there are a lot of very well-described cases and every person uh, observations. So people like do that for themselves and they, they post it before COVID they had normal level and after COVID it's twice lower and they're deficient now so if you were deficient to begin with and then you started to compensate with uh, vitamin D you shouldn't assume you are still well compensated you might drop again to the baseline level so it's important to measure it up now uh, there are two approaches to vitamin D correction physician's approach and a good physician approach mm -hmm. Physician approach is that there are high level preparations of vitamin D with very high activity and uh, physicians may prescribe this bolus vitamin D. You just have like 500,000 units in one eat and then you go home and that's it. Your level is compensated. It's called loading dose. I can tell you that's real bad, bad, bad. It might fix your level but it really can produce such a huge flux of calcium into your vessels. Then if you two years after would have some uh, aortic rupture, they say, oh, well, certainly it's not connected to you taking large dose of vitamin D. But uh, it's very enticing for physicians to use it because, first of all, 
500,000 units, it would be a medical preparation, so it will be a drug given to you, not an over-counter supplement. And also it will have quick result. So you have your test yesterday, now today you had your 500,000 units, and week after your level is all great and peachy and the problem went away. It's not a very good thing. The good physician would do slow correction. So you would take certain amount of units per day. Better if it would be divided into takes. And with every take, you will be a little bit fixing it. And in a couple of months, you will get to the normal level. And then you will have supporting dose. So you would be using the supporting dose for uh, uh, making sure that you still have enough of the vitamin D throughout your lifetime. That is a more reasonable approach. The doses for this correction, like for daily correction, depending on the degree of your deficit, they are between 1,000 units and 5,000 units a day. But of course, it depends on what you have. If you have slight uh, insufficiency, then it's 1,000 units. Then you might be having 2,000. But usually those are to have stable levels. On the post-COVID, you might need... 5,000. But there's a big difference between 5,000 and 500,000. See what I'm saying? <laughs> so please be careful about it. Generally, you need to do slow correction over fast correction. And vitamin D is very powerful more molecule, way too powerful to do just a fast correction. And by the way, the same is about iron. I should say that we have absolutely the same thing about iron. It's very enticing for physicians to just do some kind of iron injection, and then you have your iron normal throughout the body. But it gives such a huge storm to the patient system. Many patients actually get hospitalized after such treatment because too much inflammation. Not everybody can really handle it. Much better way, of course, it's very painful way. It's you take iron supplement day after day, not any supplement, by special supplement, which is more easy to get absorbed. You take it for sure with vitamin C because vitamin C is helping you to absorb iron. That's why apples are so good for you, both iron and vitamin C in them. Of course, not very sweet apples, but sour apples. Day after day, you can bring up your levels of iron without necessity of doing this uh, injections. Zinc is an interesting case. You actually usually not have zinc deficiency. The zinc levels that we are using to kill the virus, I mean to help antiviral therapy in the beginning of the disease, those are overloads with zinc. We don't need those overloads on every day. Usually we do not have zinc deficiency as such even after COVID. So you might have a small amount of zinc just in your multivitamins or together with, but you don't need to overload on it. You don't need to continue like 50 milligrams of zinc uh, throughout your post-COVID. I do not support it. Actually, there are studies which show that zinc is not so good for aging brain, so don't overload on it. What about vitamin C and in which form is best to take it? That is a very important question. Uh, actually, it's true not only for vitamin C, but for other vitamins as well, that uh, more modern forms of vitamins uh, and other uh, bioactive compounds, when they are delivered in the biomicellar or liposomal forms, they are better penetrating our tissues. That is true for curcumin, for example, common anti-inflammatory compound, true for vitamin C, for everything else. But they are substantially more expensive than regular forms. I would say if you have choice, for sure take liposomal uh, formulations. Mm -hmm. If you don't have choice, then vitamin C is actually creating some problems for some people. It's not free of problems. For example, men, especially men who are having predisposition to the uh, kidney stones, they might have uh, enhancement of their stone forming abilities as a result of long-term vitamin C. For those people, for sure, liposomal forms is preferable and they should not uh, really overload on it. One gram of vitamin C is absolutely tops that can go without liposome throughout uh, our colon. So if you are taking more than that, it's just going straight into the formation of the stones. The bacteria will eat it, will make oxalic acid, oxalic acid will fo form the stones. Why it is more important for men than for women? Because uh, women do form 
stones and the kidneys, but have different types of stones. It's not uh, based on the oxalic uh, acid, but it's uh, based uh, on uh, uh, phosphates. It's just different, different pH, different environment, different bacteria living there, and it's easier on women than on men. Mm -hmm. So men be aware about vitamin C. Women, okay, you can use vitamin C, no problem. And uh, the last one is interesting, is the magnesium. Uh, mm -hmm. Magnesium has got quite a huge spectrum of different types of uh, magnesium. Um, could you tell us a little bit more on what type of magnesium is used for what thing? Okay, magnesium is a wonderful thing. It's really, truly wonderful ion. And we need it in large amounts. We have quite a large amount of magnesium in our body. But that is true when we are young. When we are getting older, we almost, without any COVID, we are getting magnesium deficient. The people who are older than six years old, almost all of them are magnesium deficient. Almost 100%. So you would, maybe you would like to consider magnesium supplementation even uh, without any post-COVID. But on post-COVID, magnesium really helping with uh, uh, replenishing the function of nerves and making nerves uh, firing, not over-firing and not under-firing, but uh, working correctly. If you have any kind of sensations, like burning feet, like uh, itch and scratch, which is not really connected to... Uh, problems with skin because you know when you have like eczema or something you see that there is something on the skin yes so it is uh, easy to explain you you see thing you you maybe want to scratch it a little bit but if you just having sensations like for example you trying to sleep and you need to change positions of your legs all the time yes something like this it's not exactly itch but something like not giving you a chance to sleep also the cramps not like real cramps, mm -hmm. but like some cramping, which really bothers you. If you have problems with sleep, just sleep, it might be all fixable with magnesium. Also, magnesium is extremely important for the fun functioning of the cardiovascular system. So you need it for uh, health of the blood vessels and heart as well. So it's helping throughout. Also, magnesium deficiency is one of the largest contributors to Alzheimer's disease and the dementia of the old age because even in the pure and simple Alzheimer, there is always a vessel, blood vessel component. So you fixing blood vessels, you are postponing the Alzheimer and other problems. Now, what form of uh, magnesium is best? Unfortunately, the most common types of magnesium are just, uh, you know, it's like bricks, like you eating bricks, like magnesium oxide. It's totally like there is a magnesium there, but you really cannot absorb it. Magnesium citrate a little bit better, but it's more working mostly in the colon. So if you eat a lot of magnesium, you can get runs. Not a good idea, yes? Mm -hmm. So try to use bioavailable form of magnesium, which is a chelate with uh, some kind of organic compound, like organic acid uh, or uh, amino acid. For example, uh, something like uh, magnesium bisglycinate, a complex with glycine. Glycine is amino acid, also very good for post-COVID, yes? Because, you know, glycine is helping all the neuromediators to uh, make your uh, nervous system more balanced. So you have two in one, yes? Also, another good thing, especially for cardiovascular problem, is magnesium orotate. Magnesium orotate is... Uh, orotate arotic acid goes into the mitochondria, and magnesium goes to the cardiovascular system, which is also full of mitochondria. So you are helping heart mostly. Magnesium orotate commonly prescribed for post uh, uh, myocardial infarction patients, for example. But so what? I mean, you can use it. I mean, why wait till problem happens when you can fix the deficit before it comes? And it's impossible to overload on magnesium. If you would overload on magnesium, you will have runs and you will know about it. But it's very difficult to get to this point unless you are using magnesium citrate, which is the most cheap form of magnesium. Orotate, bisglycinate, either amino acid chelates. Also, there are some special forms of magnesium which are made for rapid absorption. Like, for example, 
Sanofi is making uh, this over-counter form of magnesium, but you need to ask for it. You need to come and say, I want this, and they will give it to you. It's without prescription, but you need to ask for it. Because this is drinkable magnesium, it's come in the drinkable ampule, and it comes together with vitamin B6. So in order to drink it, you need to break ampule on two ends, and it will fall into like cup or something that you have there. You dilute it with water, and you just drink it. It's fast-acting magnesium, for example, when you need to stop cramp, mm -hmm. or before you go to sleep, because you also want to have the like, relaxing effect of magnesium on your nervous system. It's very, very mild and relaxing. It is not anxiolytic. But if you have this problem, which is also common on post-COVID, like you are a little bit wound up for too long, you're going to sleep, but you are really not able to go to sleep because it's like you're having some unfinished business or something like that. Magnesium helps you to overcome this and put uh, your uh, nervous system in the relaxing mode. And what so is that's... magnesium oil? Magnesium oil is uh, the preparation of magnesium, which is aimed at uh, like sub-Q applications. For example, some old people, they have uh, cramps, old people cramps, which are special types of cramps. It's not like everything like completely cramped, but it's like sensation, sensation. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that if you put oil, it will be slowly absorbed through the skin and through the night it will produce a relief. There are oils, foams, etc. You can try it, but I mean, I don't see the point of getting such uh, expensive treatment when magnesium really is very cheap and you can use it with no problem. I mean, orally, yes. as it's good for so many places. There are also other interesting applications of magnesium, like, for example, Epsom salt is magnesium. You know, Epsom salt came from England, so surely you know about it, yeah? Mm -hmm. Epsom uh, is a place uh, in England uh, where it was found that uh, animals come to a particular place, they lick the ground, and it was found that uh, that's uh, the place where magnesium is very rich, and that's why they come in there, and then they decided that, okay, it's maybe good treatment for people. So they started to get the salt from the ground and sold it as a salt uh, for, like, uh, bathhouses, uh, for relaxation, baths, uh, stuff like this. People can do it at home, of course, but there are also spa. Uh, yeah, you can do it. I, of course, it's absorbed through the skin. But you don't need to go all nine yards of, you know, going into the bus for like one hour or something like this when you can just take a pill and, and that's it. I mean, it saves time. Thank you very much for this overview of vitamins and the information you provided to our channel. So see you next time if you're going to have time. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. Let me remind you that all our videos are for educational and informational purposes only. For medical advice, please speak to your general practitioner. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.